Okay. So, which chapter are we in now? You guys know? Eight. We're in eight. Because seven, the homework, and the quiz is up for this chapter seven. It's due Wednesday, yeah. Are we going to go over some more examples from block diagrams? Uh, I wasn't planning on it, but... Possibly. I don't focus on block diagrams. Um, okay. So, in the homework, I so I said like, you know, you don't you don't have to use block diagrams because I don't focus on that technique and I don't really teach it in class. Okay. Um, I'm not a huge fan of block diagrams. As far as I, I I love block diagrams, I use them all the time, but I don't use them for the analysis that they use them for in the book. So. That's why I still recommend using the method that we learned uh, and then translating it into the form that's required by input output equation. So the block diagrams, I don't plan doing a lot more examples. I am going to post the solutions, however, to the homework, and that should show you how to do the block diagrams. Um, I mean, we technically covered enough for you to do it that way, but I didn't do any examples of how to do it that way, and so I'm not really requiring that. Yeah. You won't see anything on an exam where it's requiring you to work the entire problem with block diagrams, for instance. Uh, okay. So... We're in chapter eight. Chapter eight's got, um, it's mostly about solution techniques for differential equations and different system properties as well. And uh, uh, chapter nine is actually just focused on solving first and second order systems and understanding how they respond. Okay, so that's really all the material that we have left in this semester. That's all we're going to cover. Um, the road before us is very well paved, except for one pothole that I need to fill in, which is I'm going to I'm almost done with these notes on like the, distilling all like the tricks down into one little page or two pages or something. So, anyways. That's um, what we've got until the end, and so we're, we really only have two chapters worth of new material, and then we're done. Almost there, you guys. A couple more weeks of lecture, and that's it. And actually, yeah, and then next Friday isn't even lecture. So, lab this week, coming together. I don't know, stuff is being shipped here from around the world, and I hope it all arrives in time, but we'll see. Um, well, so the lab this week is motors, and I've got these motor drivers coming. And I, Well, what, part of it was my mistake. Last week, in my delirium, um, I was like pretty out of it, but I was like, I need to order, I need to order these parts, <laughs> and I ordered the wrong part, well, I ordered, I ordered a chip that didn't have an integrated circuit with connectors on it, um, I cannot fab with a chip very well though, I need leads to solder onto and things, so anyways, I uh, ordered the board this morning, it's supposed to be overnight shipped, so it should be here time we'll see and I still have to do a lot of soldering so I think it's all gonna work out for this Thursday but there is who knows also if I get sick again or like if it makes a resurgence because I, I like had like the flu um, but I think I'm over it now and I'm, I'm not I shouldn't be contagious because I don't have a fever anymore but yeah anyways if that comes back because I'm staying up late soldering then we'll see it might have to push the lab to next week but I really hope I, we can do it this week I thought you got a flu shot 
I did. That's the problem. I have like I haven't had the flu in like over a decade. It's ridiculous. Anyways, I had a cold this year too. I don't know what's going on. I'm falling apart. I'm 30 now, so you know I'm like practically yeah 2016. <laughs> Chalk it up to 2016, chalk it up to being 30. That's a rough age. I'm, well, and I'm going to be 31 soon, so yeah, I'm practically an old man. At least you're on that side Thank of the you. podium and I'm on this side, so you know, that's, that's going for you. <laughs> I, yeah, I suppose. Yeah. No, I've got good things going in my life. Just kind of just, yes, live, laugh, love. Okay, so let's talk about system... Input functions. So, this chapter is kind of a few different topics kind of brought together under this heading of like how to solve different system uh, differential equations. Well, no, notice that we're focused on input output differential equations again. Okay? Um, we talked so long about state space, and now we're transitioning back to input-output differential equations, which we learned about before, and we learned about how to do system transfer operators, we learned about how to do state space representations. We've learned a lot of different representations over the course of this semester. And um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, I'm going to show you guys a resource that I added to the website first. So. Um, uh, resources. It's the last one. Diagram of system representations and their relations. Uh, during the horrible, horrible Seahawks game yesterday, I made this for you, for you guys, because <laughs> it was soothing to me to make this. <laughs> so. We've talked a lot about um, different system representations, and I, I want to kind of map it all out for you guys. So this is, it's the whole thing is just on one page. But it's just, it's, it's a map. It's pretty fun. I enjoyed making this, kind of. Um, so one way we can represent a system is the schematic, right? Circuit diagram. Like we could draw a mass with springs, dampers, etc. Right? So it's a crude graphical representation um, of lumped parameter models. Um, it expresses dynamic relationships, meaning that the connection between different objects uh, is dynamic. They're, they affect each other. Right? Now, uh, we have two other graphical representations that we've talked about as well. Linear graphs, right? And block diagrams, okay? Uh, we haven't been focused on block diagrams that much. We use them a lot. They're very intuitive, inputs, outputs, how they connect. But they're sort of fundamentally different than a linear graph or a schematic, both of which express dynamic relations, meaning that one object sort of loads another object. They affect each other, right? Whereas a block diagram is expressing uh, algebraic relationships, okay? So it can you add things together and multiply things, uh, which is sort of fundamentally different sort of diagram, right? All three are useful, and we use them in different contexts. Um, I, in particular, like to use block diagrams for inter-system representation. What's the difference between inter and intra? Inter is like inside something, and intra is like uh, so it's other places. It's actually the opposite of that, but yes. Um, so intra is internal, oh. and in inter is between, or among things. International intra. Like international. Intranational would be dom what we call domestic stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. I guess because people didn't like the term intranational. Intranational. It just sounds like maybe you have an accent and you're trying to say international. 
like nuclear. International politics. Nuclear. I love that word, nuclear. Nuclear. Also, also. What is what do they call people who sell houses? Real, real, realtors, real estate agents, moms. Realtors. Real realtors. Real, realtors. realtors. Uh, there is no syllable in there. There's no letter. I don't know how come people say realtors. I don't understand that. Never made sense to me. Anyway, sorry. All right. So these three are graphical representations that we have. And we can, um, I'm going to just review all the different representations before we talk about how to connect them. We have state space. It's another way to represent things, right? We learn how to do that. Uh, it can represent multiple input, multiple output systems, right? And it's easily simulatable. You can use MATLAB, for instance, to simulate it. Uh, we also have the input-output differential equation. This is a little example of first order. Um, it's single input, single output, right? So a differential equation has one, a single first order differential, or any order differential equation has a single input and a single output. The IO differential equation always has that. So uh, those are two differential equation representations that we have. Now. We also have one of these down here so far. We don't have the other two yet. So this is the system transfer operator, which allows us to think about a system in the block <laughs> diagram, for instance. And then it also um, gives us, one of the reasons that we use it, it right now is to uh, make a bridge between state space and the input-output differential equation. So I, I'll come back to that when I talk about the connections in a second. And then there are these two, two remaining ones that we haven't introduced yet, and I'm going to introduce those when we get to system dynamics next semester, uh, the transfer function and the frequency response function. Both very important. Uh, and they're very much related to system transfer operator. OK, those are the only system representations we're going to really consider in this class and in system dynamics. Now, let's talk about the relations. So the schematic is kind of like our first thing that we draw when we have a system we want to analyze, right? We lump the parameters and we draw a schematic. The interpretation of that um, goes into the linear graph. And it's, this linear graph is sort of like a distillation of, of the essential aspects, dynamic aspects of the schematic. The schematic might include all kinds of other information in it, um, but the linear graph has none of that left. Block diagram, uh, useful. We can draw uh, from schematics, we can draw block diagrams. Um, uh, like I said, I, I prefer to use it as an inter-system representation the block diagram. So you have one system, you have another system that interacts with. It's kind of useful to use block diagrams for that. Now, you can go from a schematic to a linear graph, schematic to a block diagram. Also, early on, we went from a schematic to an input-output differential equation. You remember when we did that? When we just did circuit analysis at the beginning, and we wrote the elemental equations and the continuity compatibility equations, uh, we didn't go to a state space representation. We were, went directly to an input output differential equation representation. All right, and then we learned how to go from a schematic through the linear graph to a state space formulation as well, right? Now, state space formulation, we did draw a block diagram for that. You can draw a block diagram representation from state space. Uh, also, you can go from a block diagram to state space. The book talks a little bit about that. I'm not focused on that. The black arrows, by the way, are arrows that are uh, we, we have learned a little bit about them, but we haven't focused on them. The green arrows are the places that we've sort of focused on. Um, and that's kind of where I wanted to draw your attention to, is the green arrows. 
The orange arrows are things that we're going to focus on in system dynamics. And uh, the gray arrows, there's only, I guess, one gray arrow on here. Uh, it's something that is in system dynamics, but is not focused on in system dynamics. But anyways, we'll, we'll talk more about that. OK, uh, so this, th this thing is supposed to help you not only in this class, but next class. So this will sort of map things out for you. And I kind of think next, so I just drew this yesterday, but maybe next year I'll introduce this earlier so you have a map for where we are. Because everything comes down to these fundamental objects and the relations between them, or among them. OK, then uh, the state space representation, we learned through this formula, right? H equals C S I minus A inverse B plus D. That equation uh, tells us how to go from state space to a system transfer operator representation, right? Which is useful. And we also can go. So I actually never explicitly did this, but I want. I want. So in your homework, you guys. Should be doing this uh, to go from the system transfer operator to the single input single output representation the IO differential equation so we did we talked about how to go from this to this we did do that in class uh, the other way is just so remember how we went from the IO differential equation to the system transfer operator when we use the black arrow, we said, oh, these time derivatives, they're just the S operator, right? And then we arranged it, we solved for what the output was over the input. And we said that was the system transfer operator. Okay? If you want to go the other way, all you have to do is say, okay, this S operator that we have everywhere, that's just a time derivative. And interpret it the other way. And then you have an input-output differential equation. So I'm trusting that you guys can make that leap. It's not, not super hard, not super complicated. But I showed you how to go one way. The other way is just the reverse of it. Um, and that's important. In your homework, you guys are doing that this week. So hopefully that is helpful for you. So what you can do in these problems is you can follow the green path, right? Linear graph, state space formulation, H operator, then to the IO differential equation. Now, you can go from the schematic straight to the IO differential equation, right? We know that that's possible. For some of these systems, though, it gets really complicated, and we can't find our way through the algebra. So this, if we go through this way, we know we're going to get there, which is nice. And if it's a multiple input, multiple output, uh, this is the only way to go. It's the recommended way to go. OK. And uh, you know, just to add, so as uh, I'll talk a little bit more about some of these other things. We, we never have talked about, so now we have a path. The green path takes us from schematic all the way to an input-output differential equation in whatever input-output variables we choose. Now. We've not talked about how to go from an input-output differential equation to a state space representation. Technically, you could, right? You could have, I mean, it's single input, single output, so you know that you only have one input and you only have one output. But you have, could have, so you're going to have as many states as the order of this input-output differential equation, right? So if it's a fifth order differential equation, then you're going to have a fifth order state space model that would be corresponding to it. Now, you can use this path to go from a state space model to an input output differential equation, but you can't go backwards along this path and extract the original state space. Some of the information is lost. Okay? You can do what is called a realization, a state space realization from an input output differential equation. That's this purple arrow. We aren't going to cover that. The book, I think, I was going to check. I forgot to check. I think the book does cover that a little bit. Um, maybe in passing. Well, next semester you'll have a book, the Nice book, that we're going to get for the 
for the controls section has this in it. Uh, state space realization, you can go from a differential equation to a state space model. However, it's going to be the same, it's going to be the same order and technically the inputs and the outputs will give you the same stuff. But the state variables will all be different. The state variable information is lost to you. So this is like, if you think about this as being like a compression process, so the state space is like the high fidelity audio right here, okay? And you go down and you compress it down to an input output differential equation. If you try to go back up to the state space, you, you, it's lossy. You've lost some of that information. And you can reconstruct the inputs and the outputs, the way they behave, but you can't construct the full state, the, all of the state information. So that's something to keep in mind. I, I don't teach this realization stuff in this class, and I don't think I'm going to teach it in the next class either, um, because the way that I teach the model is to go straight to state space. A lot of people, the only way they know how to get to state space is through this realization. And that's sad. We can, we can feel bad for them. We can look down on them a little bit, just a little, and we can feel bad for them. No, I'm kidding. It's sad. OK, so those two representations, um, this is the more high fidelity one. This is the one that has less information. Um, and especially if it's a multiple input, multiple output system, this is really your only way to go. You can find the, the input output differential equation governing each uh, set of input and output variables, but that's not all the information to be had. Uh, and all the state information is lost here. OK, now. I'm going to talk a little bit just about about these two, just in passing. Okay, so the this is something that we're going to get to, and I just want to foreshadow it a little bit. So the system transfer function h of s, where s is the Laplace variable s. You guys have missed it. Based on the Laplace transform, okay, it can uh, be used to solve for the output of a system uh, with the Laplace transform and the inverse Laplace transform. Um, yeah, it's it's one way to get. I mean, we work with differential equations, so you can solve it with Laplace transforms as well. But uh, the transfer function is a little bit more powerful than just being able to solve. Actually, it's a lot more powerful than just being able to solve for the output of a system given some input. Um, it's a way of thinking about the system. It's a little bit different. And that gives rise to this frequency response function, which is based on the Fourier transform and can uh, be solved. You can solve the, the dif differential equations for the output um, with a Fourier transform, an inverse Fourier transform. You, has anybody seen Fourier transform before? A few of you. Okay, um, we'll, we'll cover that when we get to it next semester. Uh, but what's interesting is that even though these two mysterious objects, we haven't defined them at all, um, notice that you can get to a transfer function from state space using an equation that looks eerily similar to this equation. Wow, what is the difference? The S is different. The S here is the S operator. The S here is what? The Laplace. Laplace transform variable S. <sighs> and so <laughs> that's the only difference if you want to go from the system transfer operator to the transfer function. Just lowercase your S. Um, and similarly, to go to the frequency response function, we're just going to say s is equal to j omega, and vice versa. So the frequency response function, I'm not going to talk about really. It's very, very useful. If anybody's ever done filters before, or thought about terms of filters, or resonances, this is where it all comes back to. All the analysis comes back to this. So this is a really useful um, map here, I guess. 
I'm gonna call it a map. So you can kind of come back to this. What we're working on now, so we started out, we were doing schematic, straight to IO differential equations, and we were solving them, right? And then we went from schematic to linear graph to state space, right? And then we learned how to go from state space to system transfer operator, and we can also interact with the IO differential equation by going back and forth here. So we've learned how to do all of those things. Now what we're going to learn a little bit about is how to solve these IO differential equations. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about these systems um, that can be represented with IO differential equations. Now, uh, there are a few different ways in which we're going to think about them, um, some system properties, but one of the things we're going to include and, and, and discuss is, uh, you know, well, of the several things, we're going to talk about how to solve them um, in different techniques than we've learned, so you guys know your way of solving them, and that's one of the things we need to know. But uh, the technique, we have some other techniques that we can use as well. Uh, and specifically for first and second order systems, they come up so often, so frequently, that we're going to take some special time and, and work on those, specifically, first and second order systems. And that's going to be the rest of the semester. We're just going to be stuck here in this block, IO differential equations. Next semester, we're going to, in system dynamics, we're going to talk about how to solve this state space. We haven't learned how to solve it yet. We could put, plug it into MATLAB and let MATLAB solve it for us. Um, but we haven't actually learned how to solve this. But we're going to learn how to solve this in general. So then we're going to be able to have solutions for both differential equation representations. And then we're going to start talking about this stuff down here. Okay? It's all contained in this one thing. It's just all on the one page. And this is practically the only page I needed to teach you guys the entire semester. Challenge accepted. Yeah. Next year, I'm going to try it. <laughs> Day one, I'm going to walk in and say, schematic. Let's talk about schematics. <laughs> That'll be fun. All right. Um, okay. So now, since that half hour was really not what 